And what's in death? When you're in death, what's in there? Loneliness? Torment? It's a tormenting place. It's a lonely place. <laughs>
lead to repentance. In other words, you know, you see your brother sinning and you think he shouldn't be doing it and you want to hold him to the line. Well, maybe your brother sees you sinning. And you don't realize that God hasn't blown the lid on you because his goodness and forbearance is long suffering. He's trying to get you to repent. Right? Okay. But after that hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who shall render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, God will give you eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also the Gentile. For glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. A review of the principle. So this is, this is the whole issue. Uh... We know that the law is good. Paul said it in Romans 7. I'll review it again. Uh, the law is just, and the law is holy, and the law is good, but the law could not make anything perfect. Now, I had not known lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. See, through the law's knowledge of sin. And we know that the law, and I make this point every time, we know that the law is spiritual. That's, you know why you know that's why Jesus said it you, you don't think I've come to uh, don't think I've come to disannul the law I've come to fulfill it and he said and until all is fulfilled there's not one jot or tittle of the law that's going to pass until all is fulfilled okay and if I can insult your intelligence once again and ask you the most stupid rhetorical question has all been fulfilled of course not all has not been fulfilled because we're still here, folks. So, not one jot or tittle of the law is going to pass away. It's just that we got to know what it's for and we got to use it lawfully. And we can't develop our standard and our expectation of what is right based on the law by taking the judgment of our conscience and developing a perception and a standard based on the law and saying, I, I think I know what God's will is. Because you don't. You don't know. I don't know. It has to be revealed. God's purpose, His eternal purpose, the mystery of His will, has to be revealed. It happens all the time. You're not going to circumvent or avoid or prevent the manifestation of evil because it is a vital part of God's purpose. I'm not saying let's do evil that good may come. I'm just talking about a reality. Do we understand that? After so long being here and hearing Brother Stair talk about the mystery of God, God made man to sin, set him up to do it. God wanted man to sin so he could save him from his sin. And some fellow with a judgment of his own conscience saying, No, that's not right to eat that apple. I'm standing in the way so you won't do it. You're not eating that apple over my dead body, Eve. Well... And, and that person actually thinking they're they're doing pretty good, right? And screwballing the whole purpose of God right from the beginning. And I say it again, or running the risk of thinking that, or uh, saying it again, at the risk of having people think that I'm advocating sin, or I'm saying sin is right, which I'm not doing, and I, I never do. Now, I know what I perceive about this, and I know who I learned it from. I learned it from Brother Sarah. And I know who gave me the increase, the Holy Ghost. And I know why he gave me the increase. Because <laughs> I received it from Brother Sarah. I have a little bit of the prophet's reward. And I perceive this. I'm not shooting off the lip. I've been thinking about this eternal purpose for a mighty long time. All right. But here's the danger of self-righteousness and the misuse of the law. Let's get back to the law. Sin took occasion by the commandment. You know, sin can't be sin in you unless it's opposing, rebelling against something, right? Sin has to rebel against something in order to establish its identity against somebody else's identity, right? If God says, I want you to walk towards the left, 
Well, then that becomes a command. That becomes a law, right? I want, and that becomes the will of God. Now, if you walk towards the left, you are now uh, an expression, a manifestation of God's desire, and you are one with God. You are an expression of God's desire, right? And so then your identity is with Him. Your identity is being used to express His identity. They're equal. They're one. Now, if a commandment that comes says, I want you to walk towards the left, and I say, no! I'm my own person! I have free will! I've got a right! And so I go to the right! Okay, now what am I doing? I'm, I'm now expressing my own identity in defiance to the other identity. Well, I don't even have the opportunity to do that without a law in the first place.